This episode of the Long Run Podcast is sponsored by Sketches. Oops. <laughs> We're back and I just mucked the open up. Second bonus issue and I've already managed to muck the open up. And this week, in this bonus edition, I'll come on to what they're about. We've got the man, the myth, the shoe testing guru, the man who asked for a lay down at 25 and a half miles, Mr. Simon Neal. You up, bro? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. He's sitting there. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, which will come out before this video comes out, he's sitting there in his uh, Mizuno Amsterdam finishers top, which fits you quite well, bruv? Fits very well, to be fair. Better than Toby. Yeah, so Toby went for medium, wasn't he? Uh, medium. Yes. And he's now yeah. given that to Admin, who is obviously female and probably could get away with an extra small T-shirt. I'd, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, and it fits her about right. So why Toby still gets a medium makes no sense to anybody. Maybe you want to email in. Uh, Side, you know the email address. Uh, Longrunshow at gmail.com. Just email in. Should we start a petition to stop Toby getting medium race day T-shirts? But with that out of the way, we're going to be talking this bonus episode about what it's actually like to hit the wall in a marathon. It's a big fear. I think of everybody who trains for the marathon because you hear these stories. And today we're going to be talking to Simon because he hit the wall in the Amsterdam Marathon. Now, if you don't know about these bonus issues before we get into that. So we do the live stream uh, on a Friday, which we record for the podcast, which comes out on a Friday, 7 o'clock UK time. That comes out and we talk about a load of stuff, right? It can be running shoes, Brighton Marathon, how big we are in Malta. It can be literally anything running related, sometimes not. And we record those live with your interaction. And then due to demand from our listeners in Vietnam, we got asked to do bonus issues. Um, and we wanted to do those on an ad hoc basis when we've got something that we want to sort of, I don't know, just push on a little bit in terms of the subject matter. Um, and one of those subjects that we wanted to dive into, because we spoke a little bit about it the other week, uh, was the fact of Simon, who... Um, We'll come on to it, but trained really well, but then actually hit the wall in Amsterdam. So I want I wanted to get him on because I wanted to talk about what that actually felt like because it is it is something that does make I think people nervous and rightly so. So I wanted to talk about that. So firstly, let's talk about so in, in general, let's talk about your training quickly um, for the viewers. So you're you're again people. The, None of us on this show are an elite runner, right? So we're just normal, everyday runners. We've all got jobs, got families, got commitments, blah, blah, blah. But we train for these things because we're idiots, but we want to try and improve. So, Si, your training was was like, watch the video, but it was like on the money, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was faultless, really, to a point. It couldn't yeah. really go much better for an everyday runner, if, like you say. No, no, you, you, you couldn't have done a better. There's no way you could have done a better training block. You turned up on race day and you felt fine, yeah? No, no. Yeah, I just I felt look, obviously you're nervous because twenty six point yeah. two miles is a long way, but, but in general, felt good. Felt, yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, you felt all right. You you know you, you I had a good sleep had, the night before. Everything yeah. was like, yeah, you couldn't really. You had food the day before. I know we had a hiccup in the, the restaurant because admin started a fight, but we we you know apart from that we was all right in terms of you. you you fueled up, you hydrated. You yeah, know. fueled up, hydrated. Breakfast was well. all right. Yeah, no, yeah. There was yeah, no... The... Yeah, and the reason I mention all these things is because when when we get onto it, you, we're trying to think, is was there a trigger or whatever that started it off? But everything building up to the race, you managed to avoid COVID. That's touch wood, but you managed to avoid COVID. You didn't get a cold like I did. You, you know, you didn't have any niggles. You, you, I mean, you couldn't have, you couldn't have done any better than... And being on that start line, you've done everything you possibly, humanly possibly could to give yourself the best chance of running that. Well, 342 was the pace we ran at, right? So you couldn't have done anything better than that, could you? No, look, I'd be surprised if on the next 
training block if it went as well because there's got to be something that crops up somewhere. It, it yeah. can't go it can't go the same. Do you know what I mean? No, I mean literally. We've said it on that. So again, watch that video. I mean, the video I'm referring to is on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. But there's a video where we rate ourselves in terms of our training for Amsterdam. Watch that video and Tobe and I because we rated each other between the three of us. I think we gave Sai like a nine or a ten out of ten in terms of like how it all went and stuff like that. Because he literally, annoyingly, hit every single marker. So we started the race off, and the aim was, was to run eight thirty, eight thirty per mile. People, we're going to talk in miles, okay? Sorry if that's annoying you. Uh, email in whatever email address it was, and and just complain to Wilco because we're just going to talk in miles. But it was eight thirty per mile what we was running at. Which actually, I do have run fat. I think it's about five twenty per kilometer. But we was on three forty two pace, which was always the idea was was pretty much to, firstly to get to halfway at on goal, and then and then get to sixteen miles. And you and I were discussing that you was going to kick on at sixteen miles, step on it, and see what you could do. Right? Yeah, basically go go through halfway, like you said, on eight thirty pace, see how we feel, and then go from there. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, go from there. And I remember the convo because we was down the river or the canals, wherever they were. Yeah, the canal, yeah. Yeah, and I said to you, right, bruv, I'm going to hold this pace now at, for as long as I can. And, you know, I'm going to hope. But you now kick on, which was <laughs> which was the plan. But you, you went ahead, but you wasn't a million miles ahead. I was quite close to you pretty much the whole time, weren't we? And then we sort of got back together because I held the pace longer than I thought I did. Yeah, I think well, in the end, I think it turned out really... You you actually was able to hold the pace the same, which was good. Yeah, longer. We, managed, we carried on going at eight thirty, pretty much. Was it about together. twenty miles, twenty one yeah. miles? It we got yeah, it was about twenty twenty one miles basically. I, it was basically because I remember it was just under twenty one miles. So I got to three hours. I remember getting to three hours and I'd done just over twenty and a half miles in three yeah, hours. Yeah, twenty and a half miles. Yeah. So I was like, right, three hours. I've got five and a half miles left. I was like, we just got to carry on going sort of thing there was that yeah there was that thing across the road i remember and then i just remember you um let's go back a step because at 18 miles yep we you did something that i've never known you to do like ever on on it on a training run and, and the reason i know is because it's because i do this a lot and that was it you said to me i need a wee um which is, is, is bizarre because when we when we're out on our training runs, the first person who needs a wee is me all the time, right? I, I can tell you all the wee stops between here and all our training runs, and I drive the boys nuts because I'm I'm just stopping a wee, in, right? That's just one of the things that I do, and it's it's I would say it's mildly irritating, sir. Si. Uh, yeah, it can be, yeah. yeah. When you've been, when you've been five times, yes, yeah. <laughs> it's my I'm ten years older, um, but at eighteen miles, he turns around and says to me. I need a wee. And I looked at him and went, what? And he went, yeah, I need a wee. So it, it weren't even a little wee. I was bursting. Yeah. yeah I really and, needed to go. So you did that. And then one point, because at one point you then, after that, between there and 20 something miles, you made the comment to me, I feel a bit dizzy. And I can't remember when that was, but you made the comment about, yeah, I, I think it was about 20 miles, something like that. I think it, I think about twenty miles. I think I said I feel a bit dizzy. I, 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 and I, I said, let's ease off for a bit. Let's just it, back out for a bit. I think it was probably around. It was about the three hour mark. So I think I said I feel a bit dizzy, yeah. but we've got five and a half miles left to go. Worst ways, we will just run this in. Yeah, it was. It was so like if we keep if we drop to this pace, I think we we, we could drop to like te- over ten minute miles. Yeah, we were discussing right. it. So you're still with it, and you said if we drop to like nine forty, not ten minute miles. Yeah, which is again like six minute per kilometers, right? Whatever happens, that's a still a three fifty two marathon. It, yeah, I, but I remember the convo about the finishing time. I was like, yeah, all right, whatever you want. And that suits me because I'm like blowing here. Um, and then and then we carried on. And then for some reason, I ended up carrying on and you just drifted and drifted and drifted. And and he, your body, and I know this because obviously I've seen the video now, but I, but also I remember the day you sort of, your shoulder started slumping, right? So I knew that he wasn't on for the, the PB, but I was worried about the fact he you'd said he was dizzy. But at, at that point, what what was you feeling? How was you? How, uh, was there like a deterioration? Was, was 
how how was you in your mind? What was you? I think I got I got through like tw- just over that, and I got through to about 22, 23 miles, and it, everything just seemed like hard work. So it, it was just every it just didn't seem to be going anywhere. It was, it was just hard work. You weren't getting anything out of your legs. You were just plodding along, getting to the next water station, and then. <laughs> I was just walking through that water station. Then I'd get going again, but I wouldn't really be getting anywhere. Get to the next water station, walk again. And just just kept on going till I eventually kept up, got up to you. But I just there was just nothing there, absolutely did, nothing did, there. Did you? Did you? We at uh, first, was you still feeling dizzy, or was you uh, that, no, I think that, that that had passed? I just, I just, there literally was no energy there whatsoever. Nothing were, left. Were your legs heavy? Were, were, was your yeah. was your shoulders heavy? What what was? Legs were heavy. It just, it was just, it was, it was an effort to put one foot in front of the other. Really. Jelly legs or, or just like yeah, lactic, lactic acid? acid. Yeah, lactic. It was lactic acid, definitely, all built up in the legs. Yeah, and it was just like what concrete? Concrete weren't going anywhere. Literally, it was like I was running with a, a massive backpack on me, full of mm. weights, going nowhere. Did it? Did it help when you went through the aid stations? Did that sort of? Did that aid, or do you checked out by then? Um. I would say, yeah, no, it it helped mentally because you was like you was getting to the next marker point. Mm. I don't know whether it actually helped physically, mm. but it helped mentally. Like I was like, right, I'm at the next water station. Let's just get to the next one now, and then I'll be eventually I'll get there, won't we? So I I picked Cy up. So uh, because he obviously said he's dizzy, uh, I slowed down because uh, my train, you know, I'd done with COVID and stuff. So I backed out anyway. So I was just cruising it in regardless. I wasn't giving two hoops about my time, but I was obviously more concerned about him. So I, I, I eased back off the pace, which suited me anyway. And then what I was doing, which is quite comical, was I was also walking through the water stations, hoping that he would then catch me up and then I could, you know, make sure he was all right and we could come in together because, I knew he couldn't be that far behind me, but I was genuinely concerned because because of what occurred earlier. So I kept walking, watched the video, but I kept walking through the aid station, which he was also walking through. But then there was a point in which y- you came you came through. Did you know where you were on the course when you came through? Genuinely, did you know where you were in terms? Yeah, of no, I knew, I knew where I came through because we came through that park, mm. which seemed to take an absolute age <laughs> to get through yeah. compared to on the way out. Yeah, went through that, came down the bottom, chucked to right. And I met you on the corner, on yeah. a bend, and then we ran round, and then it, it just seemed to take ages to get to that final right turn before you went into the stadium. They're yeah, using bits in. I mean, yeah. you, you had his arms up in. Yeah, he was. Yeah, you 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 was you was in, and and you was a the wrong shade of white, if you know what I mean. You was he weren't in good shape, the boy. And then obviously he famously said at twenty five and a half miles he needs a lay down. Um, but we we then walked. Um, deliberately to get you and then you sort of came back a little bit you felt a bit better didn't you because you was you were struggling yeah no you, you just it was li- li- the last two miles were awful do you know what i mean to get through them but but qu- quantify awful what i mean that's what 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 is that what is that feeling what was it just like nothing you've got no energy no, it, no absolutely nothing nothing it was love it was as if i wasn't even in the in my own body i said like right. i weren't now i just had to get i just needed to get to the end so all i could think about was getting to the end Two miles to go, get to and the that, end. And as you say, that park, right? That park went on forever, oh, didn't it? That park, yeah, was awful. So in Amsterdam, right? So in the route, you come out of it, you, you get the Olympic Park, you're buzzing, you come out of there, you run a bit down the road, you chuck a right, and you go through this really nice park. Right? It was great on the way out. <laughs> great on the way out. We smashed through there, like we went through there. Next minute, we're up against the canals and we're heading out somewhere, right? We literally just buzz. I can't even remember going through there. Right? All I remember that park, right, is I put my threw my gloves off. That's when I took my gloves off. And I chucked them out. And and I just remember that going through. But when we came back, like Sire, it wasn't as bad as what size was, but it, it did seem to go on. Cause and also when we came out of it and went left, I thought, oh, the finish line's up here on the right hand side. But there was that stretch where we was, where I yeah. met him that it did go on a long time. And, and I did think to myself, if the boy's struggling, <laughs> this is gonna be painful <laughs> along here. It it and it, and it well it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like you say. You came out, you came through the park, which was bad. Then you had that long drag down that road before you turned to go into the stadium, which just just went on forever, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And I, I, he got to me, and I just said, "Look, let's walk, right?" Because he, he, he genuinely he, he wasn't. Not that you weren't with it, but I could tell that you weren't you weren't like normal, right? And we walked here, and then we, I reckon we had less than 
like probably at 400 meters. No, 400, yeah, 400 meters. Yeah, 600, about 400, yeah. Yeah, maybe 800 meters, where, but just before you got to turn right to like that long stretch, uh, short stretch to go into, into the stadium. By then, you come back to life because I said to you, Do you want to just trot this in? And he was like, Yeah. And then he picked it up, and, and we all I was doing, you can't see it on the video, but I was shouting at him because we'd just seen a, a bloke, unfortunately, getting CPR on the track. And I was just shouting at you to slow down, like literally jog it as slow as you can. And then we got him across the line and then we got you some um, Red Ambulance Coca-Cola, full fat Coca-Cola. I'd run because when we was walking, I run admin and said, he's not in great way. Get some Coke for him. And so she got, went to the news agents or whatever in Amsterdam and sorted that out. Had a go at some security guard and got onto the uh, finishing line. Still don't know how that happened. But after Saturday's performance, I'm not surprised. Um, but yeah, she got on the start finish line and gave him. And what what did you drink? Was it two bottles of Coke? I had two bottles of Coke and then I had two bottles of their famous AA lemon drink. Yeah, the lemon stuff. Then I, then I was then I was back to life. Yeah, it, and he brought him straight back to life. But you finish and you 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 wasn't um you wasn't still great until until that sort of kicked in. Well, first, so that's a good tip by the way. If if you do cross the line and you're you're in you're in a bad way, go and get some full fat Coke. So that's a really good tip. I say it on a lot of the videos, but. I think I just want to, now we've got, so you, you're aware of what happened. I think there's a couple of things that is worth worth talking about. Firstly, in terms of fueling, because we always we always talk about the wall and or bonking with, with fueling. Now, what, what points did you take on a gel uh, uh, during the race? Um, five miles, 10 miles, 15 miles. And then... Did you take one of 20? Yeah, I think I took one at 20. I, d- I do think maybe I needed another gel before that. I think my p- potentially. I also don't think that it helped that towards the end, it started to get a bit warm during the yeah, race. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, the only thing Not... I would say to that, counter that, is that in training, you had taken, we always take them at 5, 10, 15, 20. At I less of an effort, though. Huh? No, it's not as much of an effort. Yeah, I was it? just about to say that. I was going to yeah. give you credit, actually, because I think you're bang on. I think you you might have underestimated the effort level. You probably might have needed to go a little bit earlier. Um, maybe the yes. sec- second one should have come at 14 and then maybe, you know, 18 and then 22. You could have probably yeah. got... Yeah, that might, that might have helped. Um, interesting point that I do want to discuss, and I'm not saying this is this is the reason for it, okay? But I do wonder if this is this is the root cause of why he hit the wall, right? And this is only my guess, okay? I don't think we'll ever get to the bottom of it. But my guess is, is that during the run, we'd loaded admin up with some LucasAid Sport, right, that we got in London on the way out. And she kindly filmed it, uh, filmed it, filled it into some mini bottles, Evian, little, you know, like the little uh, travel size bottles where they are. And she was at the stops, she was twice on the course, and we took one bottle each of that. It was what, not three hundred cl. It was probably two. Yeah, it wasn't even full. Yeah. So we took that and we ran with that. Now, you took two of those and you, rightly or wrongly, I think, downed them. Right. You drank yours. Tobe and I still had our first one when we got to her the second time. You'd got you drank yours so much faster than us. Like yeah. necked it compared mm-hmm. to us. You'll have to excuse me. I just drank a cup of tea. The second bottle, you did exactly the same thing, right? Yeah. You did exactly the same thing. That was gone well before your inf- your now famous pee on the bridge in Amsterdam, right? Because I remember, because I still had mine. I actually finished mine while you went for a wee. Yeah, that's I true. Put, yeah. I put a bottle in the bin that was next to that bridge, right? Now, here's my theory. And if you're a doctor listening to the show, email in, what is it? Long run show at gmail.com. Yeah. Simon, I think, overhydrated or whatever with the with the um water in the water station and more importantly the Lucasaid sport. I think that made you want to go for a wee. Your blood sugar level or, or your um blood pressure dropped and, and where because where you had a wee, because they say that and I and the reason I think this is because when I was no, 17, 18, whatever it was. Uh, I got up and I, uh, one morning I went to go for a wee like you do in the morning 
and I actually passed out. My and I fell down the stairs, broke my nose, blah blah blah. Right now, the doctor said to me that was because of my blood pressure dropped because of where I got up quickly and had a wee, and my blood my blood pressure dropped. I'm wondering whether your need to have a wee, right, made your blood pressure drop, which gave you that because of the effort that you've been doing made your blood pressure drop or sugars drop, whatever. I don't know, again, not a doctor. It's going to surprise some of you. But that that sort of took you off a kilter, made you feel that dizzy feeling, which then your body was sort of fighting something. Because you stopped for that wee and, and you were struggling a little bit, you got then that build up of lactic acid, yeah, where you've been running at quite a kilter for, for a, as you say, near and all three hours. I reckon that was the start of your downfall. By oh, having... Awesome. Yeah, it could definitely have been definitely. And I'm not saying that that fueling it, doing that because at, at Dorney when we when I did um, marathon there, I was taking Lucas Aid Sport every or oh, whatever it was. We was doing the laps up and down, but I was taking some. My brother was there, he was fueling me. I had no issues with it. I didn't need a wee. It, it but, was unusual for me to go for a wee. Yeah, Very unusual. It, I've never known it, but I just wonder by stopping doing that, whether your blood pressure or whatever that the doctor said to me that happens when you have a wee. Right, and, and because you were busting like I was in that morning when I fell down the stairs because I passed out, and I've never done that's never happened to me again, by the way. Um, it was just one of those things. I woke up and it just happened, right? I just went for a wheel, I was absolutely busting that morning and I just passed out, fell down the stairs. The failing that falling down the stairs was just unlucky because that's where next to where the toilet was. But my point is is that you you were so busting. Obviously, you're working super, super hard because you're doing this like hard effort running marathon thing. And I, and I reckon that might have been what started that process of you eventually hitting the wall because blood sugar levels drop, then lactic acid kicked in and your mind started, you know what I mean? And you drifted out. I, I'm not saying that's it, but that's the, that's the only thing that I could put my finger on. Because as we said, right, training, nailed it, right? Fueling the day before, week leading up to it, what, nailed it? Yeah, everything, you nailed it. It, there was no, there was no real other reason. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing really to put it on. Do you know what I mean? Really, I can't, I can't see what else, what else to do. But to, to, to flip it round, I think, and and say to you, if you could do it again, what would you do differently, or would you not do differently? Because it, it, it everything was okay. It was just one of those things. I mean, is there anything that stands out? Maybe, like I say, if it, I would maybe, I would not want to go for that weed. That's the only thing. That is the only thing, like you say. And the only way I would have not gone for that wee is ease up on the drinks on the way round. That's it. And, and you're maybe... Actually, you're actually... Sorry, sorry, sir. I was just spitting up, up that tea bag. I'm just drinking out of there. If you're watching on YouTube, you'd have just seen me try it. Like, I, I, it's all split. And I've now <laughs> got chamomile in my... Ugh. Anyway, sorry, bruv. Carry on. <laughs> no, so I would I would maybe just do that. So I would, I would want to not go for that wee. So to mm. take their drinks on on course and maybe fuel slightly earlier with my gels. That's it. That's the only thing. There's nothing else that I would change. I wouldn't change any training. Pace which... was, uh, and you can't say, "Oh, you went off too fast." Nothing like we we. The pace was fine. The pace we was uh, we was bang on. Like look at his splits; they were even. You still get to look. Fact, you still got the twenty miles. In there's nothing, there's on, nothing, on pace. There's nothing wrong. And like like if we compare it to Edinburgh, oh. This is the thing. If you compare when we went through halfway to Edinburgh, halfway Edinburgh, I didn't feel that we felt that good. No, nah, we said halfway, that. We? we said, listen, we can't maintain this. We said that. Yeah, halfway here, I felt fine. Even when we, when we saw uh, Sabrina at 16 and a half miles, I still yeah, felt we were fine. I've, I've seen the video. We were, we were buzzing, bruv. 16 miles, we were flying along. Yeah, 18 so miles was getting hard, yeah. But it's yeah, a marathon. Yeah. You got to realize you've been run, you've you've been running for near near on three hours at eighteen yeah. months. But we we was we was good. We were still chatting, like we said. We was like, all right, okay, this is getting hard now. But even if we, even if we like hold out to like even if we drop it down to nine forties tens, we're still going to come in at three fifty. We was having that conversation. It's not like yeah. you, you know we. So the pace, I don't think, was the issue. And again, you trained at that level. You have done a sixteen mile long run. At goal pace, you felt like you could have, annoyingly because you yeah. rang me to tell me. But that that as well, that sixteen mile goal run, that was on on a on a fifty mile week as well. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. mean. So uh, that wasn't the issue. No, it wasn't. That was. I I don't know whether it was a freak of nature, right? I don't know whether that is. I don't know whether it was what I said it could have been. 
But while I, I think, you know, to, to sort of close out the show, would you, firstly, will it impact you? Do you think it will affect you next time you go into a marathon? Will it be on your mind that it's going to happen or are you not bothered? No, that's, it's done and finished. It ain't on my mind one bit. Okay, well, which is the absolutely the right thing to think of. And the second thing, is there any advice you can give to anybody who's firstly, like, yeah, I think probably not firstly, but is worried about hitting the wall or, or you know, getting that, getting to that point in the race where, like you did, where you, you, you know, you, you had nothing else. You, you, for whatever reason, it, you were spent. You know, you were broken. What, what can you, what can you advice can you give people? If you do, when you get to that point, you've got to listen to your body. So don't try and think you can carry on going if you really have it to walk. If you've got to stop and walk and don't worry about it. You've got to, if you've got to walk, you've got to walk. Yeah. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too because like we said, we see that bloke on the track at the end, you don't want to be that bloke. So you're better off just to back out of it and just finish the race. Whether you walk to the end even don't matter, does it? You still got round. Yeah, I, I mate, you're right, but I think I think you're on the money there. It is it is that it, it you know if it's not your day firstly if you're not feeling really well go and see like whether you're over here in the UK but St John's Ambulance who are medic whatever right that's first thing yeah if you're really not feeling great you know I knew so I wasn't feeling 100 percent that's why I backed out we we had each other we work as a team that's fine you know we've got each other's backs but if you're you know flying solo out there whatever and you ain't feeling great just just tell someone okay but what I think what you said is is on the money if if you ain't feeling it don't push on. Don't be that idiot who tries to push on and go, oh, it'll be all right. There's there's other days. There's other marathons. There's other events. There's other races. The world ain't going to stop turning just because you haven't gone sub four, for example. It's, it's It makes no difference. So, you know, don't be that guy who was laying down on the track getting CPR. Please don't do that. You know, please take care. If you're in that awful situation where, you know, you have hit that wall. And don't fear the wall, yeah, because... It's part of marathons and marathon running. Marathons, we've said it, didn't we, sign the video? Are bloody hard, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're hard. And they're hard for a reason, yeah? It's a long way. We just said, you know, we was three hours on our feet, you know? so Three hours and you still got an hour to go. Yeah, it's, for some, and that's that's for us. You know, some people take eight hours, which is just that, that's, incredible. That, that's the thing you've got to remember as well. We still got round in, look, basically four hours. There's some people yeah. be out there for six, seven hours. That's what I mean. That's so what I mean. You, you like think, that. right, bruv, you, you, you stop for a wee, right, I reckon five minutes, yeah? By the time you had a wee, got going again, whatnot, probably three or, yeah, probably maybe max five minutes. Then walking through the A stations from about 23 onwards, wherever it was. Yeah. That's probably, and you still came in at 4.05 or 4.06, wherever it was. It just shows you, you know, you were licking along there. And the oh, bits, yeah, you bits that you were running towards the end, you know, you were still. I remember when I was like waiting for, like, I, I was run, then wait, run and wait. I was like nine oh nine or something. I was, um, I was when I was when I was running when I weren't walking at end bit. It was still like you say, down like nine thirty. Definitely, yeah, it wasn't like you was is, like oh, I'm fourteen minute miles. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was. It was none of that. So no. it, yeah, it's. It, it, I don't know. It's a, I think personally, it's just scrub it down to, and uh, I'm going to not be able to say this. An anonymously, an anonymous, an I'm not even going to try. Yeah, don't even try. But a one-off, a freak event. I, I do think I say my thoughts were what I mentioned earlier. But I think don't fear the wall. Embrace the wall by making sure your fueling is on point. That you do all the bits that you can do, like so I did, and and then and then you're in the lap of the gods. I think that's that's the thing, isn't it? You can only do what you can do, right, Sai? Look, if it ain't your day, it ain't your day. There ain't yeah. no point worrying about it. Yeah, you can't do you can't do nothing about it unless your name's Toby, and you do no training. You hang out with girls from um, Amsterdam uh, the night before. You start a fight in a restaurant, and then you go out and run three forty four. I mean, unless that, that's the only other thing, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Well, I'm not even going to comment on it. Yeah, don't comment on that. It's not worth it. Okay, right. So, Simon, thank you very much for being on our bonus episode. Um, if you're liking the bonus episodes, drop us an email in at, what was it, sir? Longrunshow at gmail.com. Let us know. We will pick these up. We, As I said, these are going to be ad hoc people. So they will come, basically, when we've got something that we really want to dive a little bit more into, like Cy hitting the wall, you know, Tobes training and, and whatever, we, we will we will try and pick these up where there's something interesting that maybe on the show, the live stream on a, on a, on a 
normal episode Friday, seven o'clock live, and then obviously the podcast. But so we only get you know limited time to talk on certain subjects. So if there's something within that that we want to expand on, that's where the bonus will kick in. But don't expect them every week, people, because I tell you what, that ain't going to happen because basically we can't be bothered and we're not being paid to do it. If we was getting paid, like. I don't know. What's that? What's that? A really boring one that Hayden said was really boring. What was it called again? Runners, oh, runners, runners world. Runners world. You know, they get paid to make that people. We're not getting paid. We do this because we love running and we love talking about it. So don't basically bottom line, just don't expect one. Um, and look forward to the next one. Right. So I thanks a lot, bruv. Anything you want to share with the viewers or, or you're done? You just want to go. No, I'm all done. He's done. He's the boys checked out. Right. That's it for me. I'm now going to try if possible and play the outro, although he's got so many things here. I'm going to try this one, Sai. So thanks a lot, bruv. I'll see you soon. I'm going to play this and see what happens. <laughs>